Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and guess what? It's raining again, but I was lucky enough to have been invited to this indoor club about a year ago now. So I'm going to see if I can fly my 3-inch DJI HD FPV model in here. One of the main criticisms of this system is that it's too heavy and too large. And my response to that is, try telling that to somebody who's been doing this over 20 years. If you are new, then you are too spoiled and also wrong because I managed to fit it nicely into this Gap RC 3 inch frame and it flies perfect. I'm intrigued to see how it performs in here though because a lot of the building is made out of metal and you get quite a bit of breakup in certain areas using analog gear. So I'm going to turn focus mode off with it being a smaller place and attempt some loops and rolls without crashing. I'm using the stock antennas and first of all I'm just going to show the onboard DVR from the goggles. Well, the system performed so good that even though this is the recorded file from the goggles, it didn't drop a single frame and it synced up perfect with the recording from the A unit. So, although the goggle DVR doesn't record any audio, I was able to add it in the editor. And to show you that, I'll actually add the A unit's recording in the background, which I have dynamically stretched to 16x9 to give it that GoPro look. Now, I don't want to mislead anyone here because it is true that when flying around trees and objects outside, the DVR will go out of sync with the air unit as it drops frames. But in this small space, despite it being indoors, reflections didn't seem to be an issue. So I'll leave you with some flying switch in between the goggle view and the air unit. And then I want to compare it to an analog feed, but also the Cadex Tarsier, which on paper has a higher resolution.
Well, I was majorly impressed with that performance. This is some analog footage set to the same power output. Speaking of power, DJI have just released an update sticking to their word, so you can now output 200 milliwatt and 500 milliwatt, as well as the previous 25 and 700 milliwatt, if you're allowed to do so. There have also been some other major changes, such as the ability to record the on-screen display information from the goggles via a subtitle overlay. I believe that Analog In has not only been fixed, but has other options to adjust the screen position and size. They've also fixed people experiencing lockups and SD card errors, so I'll have to do an update video on what all of that looks like. But back to Analog, and you can see it's perfectly usable, and I'll still be using both Analog and Digital together. What's interesting is how washed out the Cadex Tarsier image looks in 1440p mode compared to the DJI image. I still love the Tarsier camera in this configuration, but it seems even though the DJI Air unit records in a slightly lower resolution than 1440p, it has more clarity and in my opinion has a better image. Oh, by the way, most of us in the UK and Europe couldn't buy the DJI system from Banggood, but you now can, and there are massive savings to be made, especially with their coupons, which is annoying for me because it wasn't an option at the time, but I thought it's worth letting you know, and I'll leave details in the description of this video if you are interested in that. Anyways, I'll leave it there until the weather improves, so as always, thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.